I have spent a whole half an hour trying to sort out the introduction to this video but you know what it's just not working hi welcome back it's been a while it's been a pandemic the world's been a bit shit the universe has been a bit shit and my hair has grown but welcome back to my channel today i thought i would share with you what i've been reading and what i'm currently reading partly because why the heck not i have not been doing monthly wrap-ups because my reading has been fluctuating i'm either not reading at all or reading loads really quickly so it's quite difficult to to just do monthly wrap-ups and tbrs i don't really work in that way so i just thought i'd tell you what i've been reading recently read some good stuff and i'll tell you what i am currently reading first because there's quite a lot so the first audiobook that i am listening to is a brief history of humankind and it is so interesting so it basically starts off at like prehistory and how humans came to be and now it's kind of deconstructing all of the like structures in society and working out how they kind of came about so it's just in like capitalism and this book i feel like is so so interesting it's quite heavy and it's something that i only think for me would work in audiobook i don't think i would enjoy the physical book it's kind of for me just like a really really interesting podcast about history and about world views and i feel like it is done in although it's quite a long book i feel like it's done in quite a precise accurate way i know that's kind of counterintuitive, but it's really good and i'm actually really enjoying it so far the next book I'm listening to on Scribd, if I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking at Scribd, and it is All Boys Aren't Blue, a memoir manifesto by George M. Johnson. This is obviously a memoir of George M. Johnson's life. I don't really know much about them at all, but Ashley from Frolic Through Fiction had recommended this to me, and I've seen it floating around on booktube, and I really, really love memoirs. I find people's life stories really, really interesting so so far really good it's quite a short audiobook i've read about two hours um it's only like five hours long so i'm really enjoying this and i'm really enjoying audiobooks generally i think that while i'm playing animal crossing or while i'm coloring or while i'm doing something that isn't like physically reading it's really nice to listen to something and i find them quite comforting sometimes i really don't feel like physically picking up a book because i don't have the brain capacity to focus on something or process anything so for me especially during this pandemic audiobooks have been really really useful the next book i am reading on my kindle and i guess this is also something that's quite new well it's not new this kindle isn't new but the concept of me picking up and reading on my kindle is quite new i live at home i live in quite a small space and i'm running out of book space so although i enjoy physical books more than ebooks ebooks save space like that is it and sometimes ebooks are quite cheap and they come on kindle deals and stuff and i am reading white fragility put the cover there and this is kind of like an academic deconstruction about the way that white people conceive race and conceive racism so far i think that it is very interesting from an academic standpoint i don't know how well the arguments hold up i feel like the author is making quite a few sweeping statements and not diving in as much as i would quite want them to but i feel like i need to read the whole piece to kind of have a full opinion i am 41 percent through so far this doesn't read easy this reads really really academic and i don't know how accessible it would be to the standard person i feel like i have to be in the mood for this i feel like i have to really concentrate and put like my academic university head on so i'm unsure about how worth my time it is um and i'm I'm not really swayed by the author's arguments because of the kind of lack of evidence and lack of explanation that they're sort of providing however i'm going to carry on to the end because i do think that it's a piece of literature that i should be reading at the minute and that is that but i'm not convinced about how well it stands up as a piece of text the next book that i'm reading is wonderland by juno dawson i am almost finished with this i've got about 150 pages left of it this follows the story of alice who is looking for a friend her friends her specific friend and she stumbles upon this really really exclusive high class party and there's lots of drugs lots of alcohol um lots of trigger warnings for drugs sexual assault 
um, all the dark things in here. Gino Dawson has really like packed a lot into this book. I feel like this book is really good and really important but I feel like it's just not as good as the her other books. Maybe I'll be wowed by the end, but I have not. I read this as a sort of thing that I could think, oh yeah, I'll read that super fast. It's, I love Juno Dawson's book. I basically consume them all the time. Um, but it really hasn't been that for me. I don't think I connect with the main character, Alice. You know, she's like a high society girl she goes to a boarding school she's obviously really really rich and I'm really really struggling to connect with her at the moment and I'm really struggling to connect with the other characters in the book and I don't think they're as deep as Juno's other characters but I'm disappointed compared to our other books but I guess overall it's not that bad I feel like the books that I'm currently reading are just gonna get worse so the next book I am reading is Everything Under by Daisy, Daisy Johnson. I don't have the just dust jacket on it. Um, this is, I was sold this as an Oedipus retelling. And so far I have figured that it's following three perspectives and that is kind of it. I've read other reviews of this book that said that they are confused about to the last 150 pages. I haven't twigged what like obviously I know the Oedipus myth but I haven't seen the myth come through and I'm about 70 pages in. However the only thing that is keeping me on board with this book is the writing. I think the writing is really really beautiful and it's really really lyrical. So I am going to carry on with it. However it's not grab grabbed me as much as I thought it would. This was like nominated for the Bailey's Woman's Prize for Fiction or maybe even the Man Booker but I'm not wowed by it so far. I just feel like it's a bit mediocre. The next book I am reading is Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This again, I just kind of feel like it isn't grabbing me. I am really, really struggling to get into it. I really feel like it's mediocre and I'm really, really bored about reading about white men of the capital. Like, this book isn't what I want it to be. I don't know if I'm gonna learn anything more about Panda, Pan Am. I don't know if it's going to add to my love of the Hunger Games, which you'll see in a bit. I just don't know, and it's just so long, but I also don't want to DNF this um, yet, because I feel like I need to give it more of a chance, but I'm not enjoying it. I can't really say that it's good. And the final book that I'm currently reading is Broken Throne by Victoria Aveyard. This is... Alright, it's a collection of short stories about kind of Norta, the world that Victor the Red Queen was set in. It's a companion novel, it's good, some of the stories are really good, some of them are really bad. I always find this for short stories, I connect with some more than others. Um, yeah, overall this is a bit, bit meh and it's taken me a long time to get through because I can't be bothered to pick it up. And getting to what I am currently reading. I'm going to go through these in what I read order. So the first book that I finished was Burton on Burton by Tim Burton. This is a biography of the director Tim Burton's life. This took me a really really long time to read. I thought that in places it was really dry but then in some places really interesting. It basically is based on a couple of interviews that Tim Burton did um, and it's really really well researched and put together and I really enjoyed Tim Burton. I really enjoyed reading about the books, the films that I really liked, so Nightmare Before Christmas, and learning how Tim Burton's career initially started out. However, some of them I just wasn't interested in. I rated this three stars. It was sort of interesting, but nothing particularly wowing. The next book that I read is How To Be Famous by Catelyn Moran. This is a sequel to her first like fiction book how to be a woman which i absolutely love this follows a young girl from wolverhampton who pursues her dream and a career in journalism and this basically fully follows dolly's career in journalism and how what happens when she moves to london i felt like there was a really really strong theme of female empowerment and kind of like speaking out against sexual violence and sexual assault however I just didn't think this was as good as the first one. I really liked the development of Dolly's character and I loved to see her grow up. And I loved the way that she dealt with some of the hefty topics in this book. However, I just don't think that it was as good. I just didn't connect with it as much, but I really like admired the themes. I was expecting this to be a five star read. I think I rated it 3.5. So not as wild, but it wasn't terrible. Like I didn't hate it, it was very, so so. 
the next book that I read was Nevermore by Jessica Townsend and this is a middle grade book about a young girl called Morgan Crow who is rescued on the night of her death and she is taken to this whimsical land called Nevermore. When she gets to Nevermore, she has to complete a set of trials to become a member of something called the Wondrous Society. And this book follows Morgan as she's going through these trials, as she's kind of working out where she fits in this whimsical universe. I loved this. This was so good and just wonderful. It was fantastical, bizarre, quirky, middle grade. And I felt like the setting was really really well developed for a middle grade book and I feel like in the further like, books in this series it's going to be even more developed. I love the story, I love the characters, this was really good. I rated it four out of five stars and yeah it was, it was good. The next book I read on Kindle and it was Normal People by Sally Rooney. I read this before I watched the TV series but I loved both and this follows Connell, Cornell and Marianne kind of through when they left school up until the end of their degrees at university and it follows kind of their on-off relationship and their secret relationship and how they kind of grow as people. This was beautifully written like Sally Rooney just manages to write characters in such a way that kind of gets me and I think that it's really really interesting and her character development because even though the story would sometimes jump six months you kind of felt like the character development was quite progress like it was progressing quite nicely and you didn't feel like the characters jumped to odd conclusions or jumped to or jumped to odd parts of their lives and i really really grew attached to marianne and Connell. i just just really liked them and i really loved the way that she really intricately wove interesting topics such as class and race because obviously Cornell is quite of a different social class to Marianne even though they live in the same town you really kind of felt that she was better off than him and that kind of how that meant and when they both uh, did well at university and at scholarships how that meant more to him because he couldn't afford ed education whereas to her she didn't really care it just kind of happened so I felt like this was really interesting it explores a lot of a lot about sexuality, a lot about just a broad range of topics for such a short book. I fell in love with it, I fell in love with the series. I rated this 5 out of 5 stars. I thought it was really good. Sally really did it again. The next book that I listened to was Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid and this followed the story of Hannah who, the concept of the story, it follows two paths that Hannah's life could go and it follows, she basically gets involved in a car accident and one part of her life follows one road and one part of her life follows another and it's working out like the decisions that you make and how they influence your life and how they influence like what is going to happen and how it influences your relationships. This was a really really interesting concept, concept and I felt like although it could have been quite messy Taylor Jenkins Reid actually made it work. I really really loved the character of Hannah and in both pathways of life that she chose to well, that she took part in in the book I felt like she really really grew as a character and grew, came, actually in the end came to the same sort of conclusion I thought that the characters around her were so loving and it was really really interesting and I think that it's a really cool book for somebody who was in their mid-twenties it is definitely a mid-twenties I am lost and don't know what to do with my life book and I felt like it did work and it was quite a complicated concept but also you could kind of lose track of what bit of the story you were at because it was the same characters just in two different scenarios so to begin with it was quite jarring but after a while after you got into the flow of the story it wasn't as bad. I did think that some of the characters especially the male characters lacked a little bit of depth and I would have liked to have seen more but overall it was such like a nice story and I love the way Tyler Jenkins Reid writes. I've read quite a few of her books now. I rated this one four out of five stars. I would read more. The next book was a reread for me and you'll probably know what it is. The Hunger Games. It is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Everybody knows what this is about. Um, for me, I haven't read this book since I was 16 and this did stand up to a reread. I was a little bit nervous going in thinking, oh my gosh, I read this when I was 16, 15, loved it but don't know if it would stand up to me as an adult. This did. Like, 
I still love the characters in this. I still love the setting, the story, the writing style gripped me. It made me feel all the feels when things happened. I obviously read this in anticipation for the new prequel. But this didn't disappoint. I rated this 5 out of 5 stars. I loved it. It's good. I think I'd probably reread it. I'm going to hold on to it. Not going to get rid of it. It was really good. And in a similar vein, I read Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. This is the sequel to Hunger Games. This one really surprised me because I thought that I remembered this one pretty well and that this was one of my favourites. However, there is like a main thing that happens in this book and I'm not going to tell you what in case you haven't read it. And I thought that happened earlier in the story than it did. And that really, really surprised me. So I rated this the same. It's really interesting with the Hunger Games, I actually rated them the same that I did when I was 16. So not too bad this was really good i really liked it i don't think i've got much more to say about it because it was a sequel the next book that i read was the binding and this is kind of like a 19th century inspired universe where you can get your memories bound into books and one of the young boys in this story is basically an apprentice where he's learning how to bind people's memories into books this story definitely takes two strands first of all it is a romantic relationship between two young boys who are of different social class. I really really liked the way that Bridget Collins portrayed the class in this story. I really felt like you could feel the unrequited like romancy kind of vibes from this book. It did make me feel all the feels. However the concept of binding your memories and putting them into books was a really cool idea. However I didn't think that it came across strongly enough in this book for it to be a major feature. I felt like it would occasionally be brought up and then be like a side issue and for something that is so interesting I think the author could have made a lot more of it. I really liked the setting, this isn't something that I would typically read, I read it as a buddy read with my friends but overall I rated this 3 out of 5 stars and I definitely would consider picking things up from Bridget Collins again. This was a very very strong like debut book and it had a really strong unique idea behind it and yeah it was overall quite good my camera battery died so the final book that i want to talk about is wilder girls by rory power this follows the story of a group of girls in a boarding school who are quarantined on an island due to a deadly virus yes i read a virus book in the pandemic and it didn't cause me severe anxiety this is a disease called the tox and it affects the women in different ways this fundamentally for me was a story about female friendship, about kind of how close the women in this story was and it was so heartwarming. One of them goes missing and the others try and find it their like goal to find out where she is and what the hell happened to her. I kind of felt like the portrayal of the virus and of the girls was really interesting in this story. I was gripped by the concept. I love books set in boarding schools. I find them so interesting. I'm not really sure why. And I thought that the kind of way that they'd been cut off from everybody was super, super interesting. I rated this four out of five stars. The only thing I didn't like about it was I felt that the story ended too abruptly and I felt like it introduced the concept really, really well. But then actually at the end I felt like the story didn't develop at all. I could have done with like another hundred pages and a bit more of a dramatic climax to the end of the book. But often virus books are quite anticlimactic. I also didn't like the portrayal of the adult characters in the book and I felt it really kind of inaccurate that there would only be two adults left in a boarding school of a load of girls. So I thought that that was quite inaccurate but apart from that I felt like this was a really quick enjoyable thriller and overall pretty good. So that is what I'm currently reading and what I have read recently. Let me know down below if you've been reading much recently. I know that it is very very hit and miss. Some people are reading loads, some people aren't reading at all and I find that I fluctuate like that. I'll have weeks where I read loads and want to read the universe and then other weeks where I look at a book and think it's horrible, no, no book. But you know it's just one of those let me know what you're reading down below and i will see you again soon goodbye